What's going on guys? It's Jerome Mom back at it again with another episode of NBA Kicks, the show where we count down the top 10 best sneakers in the NBA every single week of the season. All-Star Weekend has come and gone, which means we got to talk about the best of the best when it comes to the kicks on the court. Believe it or not, we actually do have a brand spanking new signature sneaker debut. I was not expecting the shoe to show up whatsoever. It was not on my radar. So I was shocked by it. I think you guys are gonna be shocked by it as well. So without wasting any more of your time, make sure you grab a snack, kick back, relax, and enjoy this special edition episode of NBA Kicks. <laughs> Starting off the list at number 10 is Devin Booker with the Nike Book One. All right, so we're starting off the All-Star Weekend episode with a curious case of what the hell are Nike and Devin Booker thinking? What, what are you thinking? Last year, Nike went all out with the release of the Ja One during All-Star Weekend. They had a special edition colorway as well as an elaborate set which helped the Ja One be the center of attention during a weekend full of stars. Now I thought that Nike would do something similar but with Devin Booker this year, but unfortunately, that's not quite what happened. Instead, Nike simply dropped the Mirage colorway of the Book One, which did end up selling out within minutes, and also dropped a very cool ad featuring Sean Marion, Kevin Durant, Diana Taurasi, and Devin Booker's overall journey to his first ever signature silhouette. Now while this release strategy isn't as elaborate as what Nike did last year with Ja, it is still pretty serviceable. However, the most frustrating thing about this weekend with Nike and Devin Booker is that Devin Booker didn't even wear the best all-star colorway of his book one. In case you missed it, Nike hooked Booker up with an exclusive all-star colorway, which was inspired by the 1995 all-star game, which was held in Phoenix and sports the same exact color scheme as those iconic all-star uniforms of that year but the only time we saw Book with this colorway was in the locker room and not during the actual game. I don't know, overall it seems like a huge missed opportunity as I think this all-star colorway is the most fun colorway of the Book one that we've seen so far, but unless you're a real sneaker fan, you never really got to see these in action. So I don't know what Nike and Devin Booker are thinking, but I'm still glad Book got some shine during All-Star Weekend, as well as a special edition All-Star colorway. Next up at number nine is Damian Lillard with the Dame 8 extended play. Damian Lillard had a huge All-Star Weekend. First, he defended his title in the three-point contest, and then he went on to win All-Star Game MVP. But what you might not know is, Adidas and Dame also gave us our first look at his next signature model. Sporting a low cut design as well as a semi shrouded look for the upper, the Dame 9 looks pretty sleek and simple and to be honest with you, I'm actually a fan of its visual design so hopefully the performance is there as well because if they are, it looks like the Dame 9 will provide an incredible value as Damian Lillard shoes have always been pretty affordable. Now the pair that Dame did rock during All-Star Weekend aren't too bad themselves with a red, white, and blue color scheme perfect for All-Star Weekend. But again, it's his dominating performances that helped make the shoe a little bit more memorable. So overall, it was a very successful weekend, not just for Dame, but for Adidas as well. But again, like what was stopping Dame from rocking the Dame 9 during the All-Star Game? Like if he would've won All-Star Game MVP, while at the same time debuting a brand new signature silhouette. I mean, that would have been incredible and probably would have took the number one spot on this week's list. Next up at number eight is Steph Curry with the Under Armour Curry 4 Floatro. Under Armour made the most out of All-Star Weekend by dropping a Curry Jam collection, which Steph decided to rock two out of the three colorways from the pack. The Curry Jam Collection features three silhouettes, the Curry 1, the Curry 4 Floatro, as well as the Curry Splash 24s, which are all inspired by the classic 90s video game, NBA Jam. 
First, Steph rocked the Curry splashes during his iconic Steph vs. Sabrina challenge. But for the All-Star game itself, Steph opted to rock the Curry 4 Floatro, which features a vibrant look. However, again, I think the best colorway from the pack was left sitting in Steph's locker, as those Curry 1s, for lack of a better term, are fire. I'm actually starting to think that I just have bad taste because to me, the Curry 1s are hands down the best colorway from the pack, but I don't know. Bring me back down to earth if you guys think I'm crazy. Coming in at number 7 is Victor Wembanyama with the Nike GT Hustle 2. Wembanyama makes a splash during his first All-Star weekend with a new colorway that's actually inspired by his own design. Now there were actually a couple of colorways of the GT Hustle 2s that I loved from All-Star Weekend. First, there was this colorway that is inspired by one of my favorite Nike silhouettes of all time, the Air More Up Temples, with the same Air graphic on the upper, which is just pure nostalgia. However, this new colorway specially made for Wemby gets the nod here because apparently the alien logo that's featured on the heel was designed by Wemby himself. As for the colorway, these are clearly inspired by the space age colorways that we all grew up seeing released during All-Star Weekend with an alien-like color scheme that probably features a glow-in-the-dark outsole as well as a chrome swoosh which I have to say is a really nice touch. Also who knows, if Wembenyama does get a signature line in the future, we might have just got our first look at his signature logo. So this colorway actually might be pretty historic to Wembenyama's career but only time will tell. Next up at number 6 is Malik Beasley with the XTEP Lingren 1.0. So these definitely are the surprise sneaker of the list because this is the first time we're talking about this silhouette on NBA Kicks. These are called the Lingren 1.0s and they're from an overseas brand called Xtep who are most famously known for partnering with Jeremy Lin. Now the colorway that Beasley rocked during a three point contest has a lot going on but what you can't take away from it is that these were one of the most creative sneakers during the weekend and personally, I love that Malik Beasley put his own avatar on his shoes. It's a fun sneaker and that's what All-Star Weekend is all about. It's about having fun, not being super serious or competitive. So I gotta give Malik Beasley major props here because he might have had the most fun sneaker during the weekend. Coming in halfway at number 5 is Shea Gilgis Alexander with the Converse All-Star BB Trillion CX. So this was Shea's first time starting in an All-Star game and he makes a great first impression with the coziest sneaker of the weekend. Now this colorway of the Trillion CX's are actually available on Converse's website right now. However, it does not feature the same knitted wool material on the upper that Shea sported during the All-Star game. Now I don't even want to think about how warm or poorly ventilated this colorway is but apparently that didn't affect Shea at all as he dropped 31 points in his first All-Star game as a starter. I also think that this is the first time we've ever seen a knitted wool sneaker on an actual NBA floor but if there were a time to rock a knitted wool sneaker it would be All-Star weekend so I gotta give Shea major props here for doing something that I don't think has ever been done before. Next up at number 4 is Jalen Williams with the Adidas Harden Volume 8. During his appearance in the Rising Stars Challenge, Jalen Williams rocks a thunder inspired two-toned colorway which feature a thunder slash lightning graphic on the overlay which is something that I did not see happening with this silhouette but it definitely goes to show you that the Harden 8s definitely have some more tricks up its sleeve. But if you were to tell me that Jalen Williams would have the best colorway of the Harden 8s more than halfway through the season, I probably would have laughed in your face, but here we are and now you could just laugh in my face. Next up at number 3 is LeBron James with the Nike LeBron 21. LeBron James, who's known for showing up in primetime, rocks a primetime inspired colorway during primetime TV. This latest colorway of LeBron's 21st signature silhouette is inspired by a Nike classic, the Air DT Max 96s, which was famously worn by Deion Sanders, aka Primetime, as a cross-sport model suitable for both football and baseball. I guess now we could add basketball to that list, however, this isn't the first time that we've seen a LeBron sneaker be inspired by a Deion Sanders classic. 
It's obvious that LeBron has a lot of respect for guys like Deion Sanders as well as Ken Griffey Jr. since a lot of LeBron's shoes and colorways are inspired by those guys. And I'm really happy that LeBron waited until All-Star Weekend to unveil these as it gets more eyes on them than if he were to wear them during the regular season. You know what I just thought of though? It's gonna be really weird to see future signature silhouettes be inspired by old LeBron sneakers. Damn guys, we're getting old. Coming in as our runner up is Anthony Edwards with the Adidas AE1. In the words of the man himself, these were definitely the hottest sneaker during All-Star Weekend. I have been on record before saying that I think Anthony Edwards' first signature silhouette is an absolute banger visually, but now that I have a pair of my own in my hands, I cannot wait to see how they perform on the court. This all-star colorway, which has been dubbed the Futures, is just flat out spectacular, with an iridescent coating on the upper, which changes color depending on the light that you see them in, but just on face value alone, the black upper with this iridescent coat is a mean look that I am a huge fan of. Like seriously, since I picked these up, I've went to them about four or five different times and each time I pick them up, I just say to myself, man, these are sick. And that's impressive because I've had a lot of shoes in my day. So for a shoe to keep impressing me every time I pick them up, that truly means that you're onto something. Now Ant did wear this colorway during his All-Star Weekend appearances, however, he sported a lace swap that sadly I can report did not come with the retail pair. Nonetheless, the AE1s were definitely the hottest sneaker during All-Star Weekend, however, they couldn't quite grab the number one spot. Finally at number one is Kawhi Leonard with the New Balance Kawhi 4. You guys already know the rules, if you debut a brand new signature silhouette, you automatically get the number one spot. And that's exactly what Kawhi did with the debut of his four signature model. Now firstly, debuting a new signature silhouette during All-Star Weekend is about as awesome as it gets. That's exactly what Dame should have did with Adidas and kind of what Devin Booker should have did with Nike. But Kawhi and New Balance were the only ones to execute this strategy. And for that, I got to give them major props. As for the shoe itself, the Kawhi 4 looks like the most accessible Kawhi signature silhouette of all time with a new low cut design as well as a vibrant and trendy look which features a New Balance logo on the medial side which I have to say is a bold choice as well as what looks like the return of Kawhi's hand graphic on the tongue. Now that hand graphic was infamously the center of a lawsuit between Kawhi and Jordan brand and while this logo isn't the exact one that we saw when Kawhi was with Jordan, it is pretty similar. So fans of that look are going to be happy to see these. But overall, I'm just really impressed with how fun the Kawhi 4 looks. It's also worth mentioning that New Balance did experience some major quality issues with the Kawhi 3. So I think they're looking to make a huge comeback here with the 4s. And so far, things are looking pretty good. As it's now time for me to officially crown New Balance, Kawhi Leonard, and the Kawhi 4s as the best sneaker worn during the 2024 NBA All-Star Weekend. Be sure to let me know what your favorite All-Star sneaker was in the comments section below. I mean, you got a lot to choose from. Personally, I gotta go with the AE ones. I love them. But the signature sneaker debut just snagged the number one spot for them. But I mean, come on. Look at these things, guys. They are incredible. Stay tuned for my initial review on the AE ones. Keep it locked here to the channel for more sneaker-related content just like this. My name's Jaren. It's been great having you. Catch you guys in next week's episode. Peace.